human resourcefulness may best be seen in the lives of farmers. Derek Ehlers, third generation farmer, is the epitome of resourcefulness. Next, on Elevate Iowa, follow Derek's inspiring path from the family farm to the National Guard, high tech manufacturer, and back to the farm. Welcome to the new Iowa. Elevated past old notions of manufacturing. Where manufacturing is exciting, clean, and a career worth talking about. The Iowa Advanced Manufacturing Grant paid for the state's 15 community colleges to focus on manufacturing in new and meaningful ways. And these are their stories. When I got out of high school, I went and enlisted in the National Guard. Most of my friends were doing the same thing. All of them are starting to get sent overseas, so I enlisted and I was one of the ones who scored well enough on my ASVAB that my path sprouted off from theirs. They went into uh, infantry and I ended up going into intel. And so I trained with them a lot all throughout Iowa and South Carolina and everything, but uh, after that, I just kind of went my own way. A lot of the things I picked up from the National Guard really have helped with my everyday life. There I was a jack of all trades also. It's pretty much what I'm doing here. After I got out, I went uh, and joined the railroad for BNSF, and I started in track maintenance. When I was in track maintenance, all I really did, I did uh, welding, just more maintenance things. If a piece of track was broke, operated some huge equipment, ripped it out, put in some new sections, welded it up again. A lot of manual labor, tons of hours, traveled the entire country. And I guess that was just one of those things, could have easily probably made a career out of it. But they lay off employees on these maintenance gangs whenever the ground freezes and you don't start up again until the ground's thawed. Um, at that point, I guess I kind of just thought, you know, I'm taking all these jobs, traveling the entire country. This isn't for me. And that's when I decided to sign up for welding classes, go to WIT. And signed up, went through the welding classes, absolutely loved it. At the same time Derek set out to learn to weld, Western Iowa Tech was in the midst of a modernization project that would expose Derek to the best welding tools, education, and testing available. Our welding program takes people from the walking in off the street, doesn't know a thing, um, gets them to the base employable level where they can go out and get a low-level job if they needed to right away, or and the farther they stay, the better jobs they're qualified for. Um, where we go from a basic production job to a much more advanced production job, getting into uh, structure, automated welding, and topping off with uh, pressure pipe. What we've done with the uh, grant was modernize a lot of our stuff. We developed two brand new classes based on uh, pulse transfer for MIG. These are modern techniques using uh, modern machines that uh, a lot of places around here weren't necessarily using yet, but there'd been talk about all these, but nobody wanted to invest the capital in the equipment nobody knew how to use. So we developed that, we developed the program to get people to be able to uh, understand how to use these machines and allowing our local businesses to invest in modern technology and update their uh, processes. We also added in uh, flux core welding, which why it's not uh, huge in this particular area, it is 51% um, of the welding in the country. So even though it wasn't big here yet, it's coming. So I went through welding classes, took blueprint reading, everything else that would help me in the industry. And once I got out of there, I came here and just started to kind of get a job, start paying back some of the student loans. I'm used to doing maintenance stuff. I like being a jack of all trades. So that's when uh, there's an opening for maintenance over here. And I jumped on that really quick. And before you knew it, I had that. Uh, started training for that. And the rest is where I'm at now. Oh uh, yeah, behind me is a uh, nine by 16. So nine foot tall, 16 feet deep autoclave. It's two forms of pressure at the same time, and they use those forms of pressure to make parts. 
So you have your air pressure and then you have your vacuum. Air being your positive pressure, vacuum being your negative pressure, your draw. In between the two, with heat and all that pressure, we actually make parts with it. Uh, Derek, phenomenal worker. Um, he joined our company, I believe, in June of 2012. Um, he went to a local community college around the area and has been a sole a true asset uh, to the maintenance department and keeping my machines up and going. You know, there's always a little bit of training that goes with it, but for the most part, he came in very turnkey. The critical things that, uh, that he needed to know, he understood and he knew that. Um, the only training that really did was just to get quattroized, so to speak. Okay, with these autoclaves, there's always fixes to be done on them. We go through vacuum ports, uh, different air valves will start leaking over time, water valves leak over time. Uh, we have to make sure that the autoclave itself, there's a pop-off valve. And one of the scary parts about this piece of equipment, if that pop-off valve is not serviced properly, and if something malfunctions, the heat and temperature inside can get so high, it's basically a giant pipe bomb sitting behind me. And it would level this entire building and part of Orange City. So it's kind of crucial that we keep these things up and going the right way. Just before I was ready to graduate, my cousin had passed away. And it was one of those deals, it was supposed to be my two cousins were gonna take over the farm and I'd be back as needed. And since then, I've had more and more family members that were already in the farming operation pass away also. And so it, at that point, it kind of changed my whole career outlook. Um, I had a brother that uh, had passed away right before Thanksgiving. And so that uh, left an empty spot to where you know, uh, we are going to be needing to bring Derek in, you know, on a more full-time basis. He's been working at Quattro Composites in Orange City and uh, has been helping during our busy times, but uh, it's going to be to where we'll, you know, we'd like to have him around more often to help us out with, with uh, the work that needs to be done with, you know, my brother passing on. At that point, I said, I'll, I'm going to be here for the farm because there's only two of us that are gonna be here in the end. So, kind of a big turning point. And the thing I like about Quattro is the fact that they are very employee friendly. So, I chose to work here on the basis that I'd be able to help on the farm yet. My own background is in, uh, mostly in industrial automation and uh, robotics. I set up robotic weld cells for a while and before that, it was real heavy into industrial maintenance, where I wasn't doing production welds, but I was the one I had to go in and fix stuff that had been broke. And it's fix it, fix it, fix it, now, now, now. Go, go, go. This is costing ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 an hour to be down. Come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. I learned to weld doing maintenance jobs and had someone who had been in there show me how to do stuff, and I had to figure out a lot of stuff on my own as well. But they go hand in hand. Uh, that's why I... I also try telling these guys, I don't know where you're going to end up, but I've never had anyone tell me that they've wasted their time learning how to weld, no matter where they went. 